But we like it that. And any night you go outside, you're bound to have some weird experience. And a lot of people really like to hear about these fun and interesting experiences you have. But to be honest, there are also these the mundane life, your mundane experiences, your just daily life, where you might think, hey, this is pretty boring. I'm just like doing my thing here. But honestly, People are interested in people, in other people's experiences. So, if you have a diary of the life that you're living, a lot of people might be interested in how your life works. So why not turn this story of your life, of how you live through whatever's happening to you, whatever's happening to us right now, and turn it into a game? And that is exactly what Ida Hartmann, our next guest, did. She's gonna have talk about her game Stillstand, where she did the she was director, she's a narrative designer, she worked with me.
Okay, um, hello. Uh, my name is uh, Ida Hartmann, uh, and I wrote and drew and designed this game called Still Stand. Um, and today I'm going to have a little talk called uh, From Diary to Game, How the Personal Becomes General. And I know that may be a little bit boring title <laughs> because I had to find it out really fast. But uh, it's mostly about uh, how to how it feels like to create a very personal, intimate game. Yeah, um, so in the beginning, because I don't presume that everybody knows what Stillstan is for a game, I wanted to show a trailer, a trailer, but uh, it can't be done with the uh, audio. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, play it without any audio, just so you can get like a visual uh, feel of uh, my game still stand. Uh, meanwhile, I can talk a little bit instead. Um, yeah, so my name is Ida Hartmann and I developed a still stand together with the, the game studio called Nila Games, who is based in Copenhagen. And uh, I no longer work at the game company, but at uh, Die Gute Fabrik, uh, who made Mutazione um, as a narrative designer. Um, and in this talk, I, yeah, I will uh, touch on some sensitive subjects, but it's not going to be uh, completely tough and dark because, uh, as you might can see in this uh, trailer, then humor and the dramatic and grotesque is also a part of my jam. Yes. Um, so, yeah, we can just see the trailer. Mm. And uh, of course, afterwards, there's going to be a short uh, Q&A. Uh, so yeah, I'm trying, I will try not to talk your ears off. So you still will be able to ask me questions, if anything. Yes. All right. Um, the beginning. Yeah. Uh, when I started working on Still Stand, it was yeah four years ago now. Uh, I wanted to be a game about alternative realities or I want to make a big sci-fi space game where everything could happen and it should be a first person giant narrative branching stuff and this might it might be clear for you all of you that I'm not a <laughs> big gamer because I was just like I didn't know how big of a production it actually needs a uh, so um I had to scale it a bit down and I also had to figure out what is like what can I do because I haven't made any games before I haven't gone to game school or anything uh, and uh, we didn't have any kind of budget uh, in the beginning so for me as an artist who has mostly worked with uh, autobiographical comics and being about which were about being neurotic in Copenhagen it seems like uh, I had to go and follow that road in some way and fortunately uh, in recent years there have been like a growing tendency with a narrative game like with more artistic and experimental uh, as you also can see in this festival and uh, it was like an, a door opening into ex exploring what could this kind of game actually be and can you actually make a game about personal feelings and about a girl in Copenhagen and not in space um so yeah uh, also because i'm not a gamer i always longed for games to be more than a game uh, uh, i mean games have always have all the narrative benefits and that a viewer must want the possibility to create an immersive universe that where you get to play a part yourself and i really wanted to explore that when developing still stand um so i needed to come down to earth uh, and also then I thought a lot about the topics that were taking a lot of time in my life at that point four years ago was also the subjects of anxiety, isolation and loneliness, which I was still trying to figure out myself. So as, a, as artists do, they create uh, and they create, we create stuff that comes from ourselves uh, in order to understand the world and ourselves better. Yes. So uh, 
I uh, decided to make a game about myself with the help from the guys at Mila Games, who was like, we tried to experiment with different stuff, but it came to be like, okay, what 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 will happen if we have a women protagonist <laughs> who, who uh, does something? And you know, I've been keeping like a secret diary for the thirty years that I've been living and uh, talking to friends, of course, but never been like public about you know my personal feelings because why should i um but everyone i know and especially in their 20s uh, suffers from different kind of mental issues and it's a very stressful stressful time to be alive with climate change and a very high level of insecurity and the pandemic came to oh my god um yeah so uh, I came to the belief that if I want to tell my not that special downfall but and experience and experiences, then someone might relate and they might even feel less alone. So actually my if I shared my feelings and my experiences, it could actually help uh, people and uh, it could help myself. So in the beginning, it was really difficult to get to the core of what it was because um, I didn't want it to be too private, you know, like talk like, okay, then I met this person and then I was sad and did it. Uh, I wanted to, but I still wanted to come from my own life. So I started to read all my journals and diaries from the back then. And I really like immersed myself into it. And it was so tough because it was just like, wandering around uh, my neighborhood and just felt all of the past emotions because I thought that what that is what artists do. Um, but, but at the same time, I was thinking, uh, this is too much. Uh, I don't want to go down this road. But also at the same time, I thought, if I really want to make a game about these kind of topics, I have to be real. And the feelings and the things I depict in the game has to come from a real and honest place. So I also had to like cross some uh, boundaries uh, in order to go to that place. <laughs> in the beginning, I felt really embarrassed every time I had to read stuff uh, aloud to the guys at the Nila Games and from my journal entries and from you know, but I soon realized that they thought about it as a piece of fiction. And it was only me who know, knew the truth about where those feelings and words came from. And I then I thought, okay, maybe it's not that dangerous to share. Yeah, so in the beginning it was like 10 chapters uh, with every, where every chapter had a theme like loneliness, anxiety, depression, failed love, failed workplace, failed family dinners. Everything was just like one big scattered uh, failure. Um, but still, uh, I needed to narrow it down in order to uh, create some sort of narrative. And it uh, ended up uh, being about... Yeah, a, a girl in Copenhagen, surprise, a, who has to live through a summer where she's like isolated in her apartment because there's a massive heat wave. I don't know if anyone recognized that feeling. Um, and then a shadow monster moves into her apartment as a funny sidekick, but also like the voice inside your head who says, why don't you just go out? Why don't you just feel better? Uh, it would be so much easier and better for you. But the girl is not that kind of girl. So <laughs> she's, she's just like, she's not having a great time. And uh, I brought in the shadow monster in order to have some humor in it as well, because I was scared that people, if the sub, if like the, the game was too, uh, if the game was too dark and too heavy, then people wouldn't play it. And then I would have some responsibility in order, like if people became depressed or had some, yeah. So I needed something to balance it out. And I usually also do that when I create comics, it's, they also, they are funny and tragic at the same time. And I really enjoy that kind of art myself where you laugh and you cry at the same time. So yeah, it was 
also a way for me to distance myself from the tough um, emotions also with like there's a, some sort of magic realism in the game as well like with fantastical elements and weird stuff weird worlds there in uh, mostly in the mini games uh, during the game actually and in, it's also a way for me to like distance myself and make it open for other peoples to to enter um yeah oh i'm talking a lot <laughs> um yeah so uh the, the we also choose to make it a comic um an interactive comic because we thought that the panels oh yeah we thought that the panels would also give like this kind of isolation feeling that also was present in my texts and uh, diaries and it really suited the style well that it, i both like drew and wrote it because the great thing about comics is they're always like the pictures are always talking to the text and the text are talking to the to the pictures and which make like um if you're an artist who can do both i think it's a it's a great way to to show um what you like it's a great aesthetic and a narrative style uh, in order to show a, a narrative um yeah so uh, yeah, I, I also decided that I wanted to hand draw it all because I couldn't draw digitally, but it, maybe it, like in a diary where you like sit and write with your hand drawings, like with, with your hand writing, I also thought that the hand drawings actually would give like the same feeling of intimacy and rawness and that realness I was really looking for. Uh, yeah, and then we created like a game design that was really mundane, like as you see in uh, in Florence, for example, in the game Florence from 2018, there was like a lot of mundane, you brush your teeth, you go to work, you swipe on her cell phone. And I thought it was really an interesting way to play a game. I've never seen like such boring, <laughs> such boring things to do in a game, but the impact was really amazing. And that's how you could also elevate a comic uh, with creating like interactivity, both with audio animations and um, like interactions and uh, actually most of the time you're like trapped you're like reliving the girl's uh, feelings and you're forced to do all of her actions so we try to play a little with like the, the way that interactions work in order to like really make the story and the feelings come through and I thought that was really uh, um, uh, an interesting way to experiment with the medium yeah, um, and then I, uh, yeah, here in the end of my small talk, I was just like thinking that a, a part of the narrative experiment was to investigate whether it was possible to make such personal and deep feeling in this way. Was it too much? Was it too depressing? Would people actually play it? But actually, I thought that um, the way that people have like met me with the game has been like they could recognize themselves and they could see part of themselves in the girl. So actually, by me showing myself and my thoughts, uh, people could relate and it, they could feel it. And that was like the most important thing for me. Um, yeah so so you know it's not like one-to-one -one part of like it's not base like it's not 100 me i am the girl but i'm not the girl and the apartment she lives in it's not my um apartment but it's like a fusion of all the apartments i lived in in copenhagen uh, and some of the words for example here you can see i i barely sleep no more i listen to the ocean it's something from my journal but is some of the other stuff is just like inspired from the journals so they've been really like a great point to go for from a, when working with a, this kind of story so everything like sprung out of like the interactivity the drawings a, the animations like everything came from that core feeling of you know honesty and vulnerability and this game taught me that Actually, it's not dangerous to be vulnerable, but it's um, actually quite good because then you create an artwork that people can truly relate to and that has an impact. Um, so yeah, 
uh, so somehow like the personal story becomes general in some sense because sometimes you have to go really into something small uh, in order to see yourself yeah and I think that's really incredible yeah so that was all for me I have no idea how long I've been talking um, but we have some time for some questions Great. Okay. <laughs> uh, otherwise, you can go to the Discord channel to ask questions. Uh, yeah, I think that will work fine. Thank you. Bye.